So in the 1970s and 1980s, a young man named Steve Russian was coming of age in Bloomington, Minnesota. He was a shy kid with a wild imagination, a typewriter, and one heck of a storyteller. He would grow up to be one of the best sports writers of our generation. And today, his new book comes out. It's technically a memoir, but I think it's better described as a teenage boy's love letter to Bloomington. How does one write a book about growing up in Bloomington? Is there much to write about? Bloomington was the center of the universe. It probably still is. But when I was a kid, it had the Twins, the Vikings, the North Stars. It had uh, flight attendants coming in from all over the world, and 747s landing. It had entertainers, Las Vegas-style entertainers coming in to perform at the Carlton Celebrity Room. As a kid growing up in Bloomington and not having seen the rest of the world, Bloomington was absolutely the center, not only of my world, but as far as I knew, the rest of the world. The suburbs larger than life size to Steve inspired Stingray Afternoons, his first collection of memories that captured his early adolescence. To tell the stories of being a teenager cruising the 494 strip. That book is called Nights in White Castle. It's the 80s, I'm 13 when the 80s start and going into high school. And so it's that less innocent age of high school, college, and moving, leaving home. White Castle in Bloomington was our high school hangout. Why'd State. you hang out there? Why wouldn't you hang out there? For the same reason that, I mean, uh, a mountaineer climbs Everest, because it was there and, uh, and it was open late. It's not silly if you let yourself remember that time. Diners and cruising, that was a thing. Heck, any food and transportation without parents, also a thing. Wally McCarthy's Lindahl Olds, where we would go on Saturday mornings to eat popcorn and pizza slices and hot dogs because they advertised free food. Uh, we would pretend we were 13 year olds who ridden bikes there were in the market for a, a, a old cutlass or something, but uh, really we were there for the food. The new book is full of those trips down memory lane. And trust me when I tell you the words on the page take you back in time. Most of the humor in the book comes from my own self deprecation because I was an awkward, uh, you know, weird kid who would rather spend, be alone in, in his bedroom writing stories for nobody to read than to be out there, you know, going to uh, the roller rink. And speaking of not going into the world of mingling with other teens in the more popular settings. Instead of going to the dance, the, uh, the, the winter formal, I went to see Cool and the Gang at the Carlton Celebrity Room. Yeah, yeah, so I went to a dance, but it was the Billy Idol dancing with myself. So when Cool and the Gang came out to play Celebrate at the end of the encore, I was kind of, you know, fidgeting in my seat as my way of dancing. But in my head, I was, I was you know, dancing with, a, with a, a girl from Kennedy at the actual dance. Steve finds making fun of himself to be very Minnesotan. He's a humble guy who was once a humble kid who lived boring summer days in Bloomington and turned them into gigantic adult memories. It's where I come from. And it's, you know, the cliche, you can take the boy out of Bloomington, but you can't take the Bloomington out of the boy. That's not a cliche. Well, no, the Bloomington part's not a cliche. Yes, that's true. That's true. That one, I, that's probably the first time that's ever been said. First times, last times, all the times in between. Those are the stories he tells. And here's something important in his stories. They're yours too. That, after all, is why he writes them down. Never as a Minnesotan to stand out, but always to blend in. There are a lot of other, you know, people on the island of misfit toys who can identify with that. And, and I think as a reader and as a writer, I think the best thing you can do is make people feel less alone. I couldn't do it justice, but Steve's stories are delightful. The book Nights in White Castle is out today. You can get it at bookstores or online. And yes, if his name is familiar to you, like I said, he's one of the best sports writers of our time. Steve wrote a weekly column for Sports Illustrated for decades.